Hey guys, still there, and welcome back to Stormworks. Where, as you might be able to tell from the big islands in the distance, we are leaving the Sawyer Islands. A couple of reasons. Uh, one, there was just not enough to do. Two, the missions that did spawn, um, spawned very, very irregularly. And as you have seen in a previous episode, I had to wait a couple of months to have another mission spawn. And overall, there are just four missions on that island. So, uh, those two factors combined make it pretty boring. Now, there is another factor why I'm leaving the Sawyers, and that's that the developers of Stormworks have implemented custom missions. Custom missions are not a new thing, but it is a new thing that you can add these, at least easily, to your career. So what I've done is some editing to my save file to make sure that I have a whole bunch of new Stormworks missions on my mission set. Or at least on this career. Now, because I'm heading back... Well, that is heading west to the uh, main slash new area. I'm uh, going to need a new island there. So I have gifted myself a one-time donation of 15,000 credits in-game to make sure that I can buy a new island there. Instead of having to go back to the Sawyer Islands. Uh, for reference, this ship that I'm using is doing 100 kilometers per hour. And even then, it's taking its sweet time to get from, uh, well, from where I was which is in a straight line 15 kilometers away. But this is not a straight line, you have to go around. So let's say about 18 to 20 kilometers. And there is another 26 kilometers to go for this particular mission. I'm just using this as an orientation point, so it is not going to be a mission that I can or will execute at this point, but it's just a way to figure out where the hell do I need to go. In case you're wondering about this ship, because I haven't showcased it yet, uh, this is the Starburst. The Starburst is originally designed around a medium engine, so I had to uh, kind of reverse engineer it to have two smaller engines. It is really fast, it is mostly stable, but it excels with its extreme speeds in, um, well, pretty much in less wild conditions. So ideally just calm water. Making sure that your props never come out of the water and you can continuously put that extreme speed to make sure that you get to where you want to go very, very quickly. And waters like these, as you can see, they're a bit choppier. Uh, the craft simply doesn't get up to the same speed and it has the risk of leaping out of the water. Now, as you can see there, uh, just in the distance, you can sort of make out land ahead just as the sun is setting there. So there is definitely more land out there. I mean, of course there is. That's the normal, let's say, uh, starter area or starter mission area. So that's where I'm going to go. Hopefully finding the medium island pretty quick. Medium island being the one where you pay 15,000 for the uh, pleasure of using that dock. And you can immediately spawn large ships. This, uh, coincidentally, is not a uh, small ship. Or it's not a large ship. It's a small ship, actually. And it does a really good job of making uh, excellent use of fuel and combining that with excellent speed. I will put it up on the workshop, uh, both the medium engine variant and this one that I'm currently using. Although this one is missing some tech. Uh, I don't know how much fuel I have. Because it's using a custom fuel tank instead of the fuel tanks that you normally have, which have a preset amount of fuel and which gives you an output for how much fuel is still left. This one has a custom fuel tank and without a fuel meter or a fluid meter under advanced or fluid management, I haven't unlocked that yet, the fluid spawner and the fluid meter. So I cannot exactly tell how much fuel I have left. But from experience, I know that this craft can easily do about 120 to 150 kilometers range. So it should be no problem reaching this new area. Now, to make sure that I'm not completely abandoning the Sawyers, I have also allowed fast travel. Um, but just the character, not the craft. So it's not like I can click on the craft in the map and immediately get jumped back to uh, whatever shipyard happens to be closest or whatever shipyard I happen to click. Now, it's going to be um, either traveling to a new position and then spawning in a new craft or not traveling at all. Now, the custom missions... I mentioned them briefly, there are a whole bunch of custom missions on the workshop, but at the moment they're a bit hard to distinguish, because some of these missions are for just spawning in large craft. 
Some of these missions are actual missions, and it's hard to distinguish which one is which without manually looking at each. So I think that the Steam Workshop might need a better way of sifting through that. There are some really interesting missions. Over the weekend, I've been uh, exploring these new mission sets and seeing what missions I like, what missions I didn't quite like. And I think there are some really, really good ones in there. Especially things where you have to rescue uh, people from a sinking ship. That is now a thing. Ships in at least the custom missions, some of them, that is, are capable of sinking. And I think that is a very new interesting mechanic. I mean, it's not that hard. Just leave a hatch open down somewhere in the bottom of the boat and make sure that the water can flood all over. It's not that hard to make a sinking ship, but so far the missions that we had that were developed by the Stormworks devs themselves were always a little bit um, plain. Go here, do this, go there, pick that up. Without really any risk or any extreme chance of stuff going wrong. Whereas if you have a sinking ship, you not only have a timer, but you actually see the ship go down. In which case, you're going to have to be quick. I've also seen missions which are um, questionable. I've had a mission that just said, pick up the loot. And I was like, sure, what loot? There is no loot. Um... Maybe somebody was messing around with the editor and then somehow decided to put that on the workshop. I don't exactly know. As for the amount of rewards that you get, they do seem to be fairly balanced. You're getting about uh, the same as you would from any normal mission. So that seems to be working pretty well. Now, something else that you can see that can allow us to go back to the Sawyers is the train line. The position where I started, the North Harbor, does have a uh, railroad. And the railroad extends all the way through, I think, here to there to uh, one of these northern islands. That's not really the position that I want to go to, because I don't have the cash to buy one of those islands. So um, the smaller one is going to be critical. Now, if you have an interesting idea for a mission, uh, and if you ideally have Stormworks, then by all means, create the mission and put a uh, put it on the workshop put a link down below in the comment section and i will see if i can still import it into this uh, active campaign so maybe at some point we're going to be seeing your mission executed here on video all right we've had a slight change of plans welcome to the beginner island why am i at the beginning island you might wonder well the uh, craft that I showed, the Starburst, is not exactly as fuel efficient as I had hoped. It is not exactly uh, capable of reaching as far as I wanted to go. Which I'm quite surprised about, because the other one could perfectly do it. But as I was sailing the craft, I noticed that its RPS was at a solid 20, which means that the engines were using the maximum amount of fuel. And that probably made this craft far, far less fuel effective than I had hoped. So I decided to swim. And I decided to swim for 6 kilometers in order to reach this island. Um, since I'm not really eager to go and pick up that craft, I've decided to turn on the uh, take it back to workbench. So here it is, back at the workbench. Now I'm going to give you a... Uh, oh crap, not that workbench, this workbench. I'm going to give you a quick show of the vehicle. And then we're going to take it out on a mission and uh, actually get it to work. Or at least, hopefully. Let's take the short way down. It might cost me a, a bit of my ankle, but aside from that, well, that'll heal up rather soon. Alright, so the beginner islands. Not particularly big for a base, but it works. Uh, it's a Starburst Voyager. Um, why Voyager? Well... See, the normal Starburst has this whole rear deck as a transport for passengers. Uh, that's the Starburst Mark II, I think. And see, here it says, oh crap, you're missing a whole bunch of items. Like a fluid meter, a fluid spawner, a large prop, a medium winch, a medium engine, and a fluid port. So this is more or less what it normally looks like. And um, over here under the hood, you would have the medium engine. Then you'd have the fuel tank. In the back we have the gearboxes and everything of that type and then over here we'd have the uh, medium prop but unfortunately that doesn't quite work so i turned it into the voyager 
which has two standard props, still the gearboxes all the way in the back, and further up front we got a double engine setup, which works, but is rather fuel hungry, as I have determined. Now, it is going to be time to take this thing out again. Uh, I'm not really eager to be refitting the whole craft once again, but what I can do is... Uh -huh. Uh, no, it's this gearbox. Yeah, it was set at 2 to 1. And even then... Or actually 3 to 2? Yeah, this is what I had, 3 to 2. In 3 to 2 mode, it's just not very fuel efficient. So I'm going to be running it in a, uh, let's say, 9 to 5 configuration. And I'm going to be taking off this rear space again, because I had this as an extended compartment for fuel, which uh, didn't work. Unfortunately, it did not work. So I can just take that part of the piping out. That was a port. And now I have cargo capacity and transport capacity for further passengers. Now, I know that there is one mission that has you transport 100 people. Holy crap. Uh, we're going to be busy with that. In the back here, let's make it four wide. This is a bit of cargo capacity space. So if I would need to transport a couple of boxes, I now can. And of course, there will be some missions that have you transport stuff. Let's make this a little larger, like that. Otherwise, the boxes immediately start flipping all over the place and uh, you just lose them. A couple of exhausts. Those are going to sit on there. And I'm just continue, uh, going to continue with the paint scheme of this particular craft, which is that yellow line on the top. Let's go for a plain fill here, there, and just manually paint these. There. Alright, I also made some changes to the bottom of the ship. Again, it is going to be on the Steam Workshop, slash already is on the Steam Workshop by the time that you're watching this. So if you want to know exactly how this thing works, uh, turn it inside out, you can. You can absolutely do that. All right, double rudder, making sure that I can get for sh or go through sharp turns. Uh, there is one thing that I don't exactly have at this point. Actually, no, I do. It's reverse. I have that. This is just a standard gearbox pointing towards the uh, the back, towards the props. Doesn't really make a difference because it's a reverse gearbox. The other one set up in a three to one standard. This is cruise mode. If I want to go fast, I'm going to set it to nine to five. Um, let's not name that Starburst Voyager. This is the uh, Starburst Starburst um, twin engine. There. Again, I won't exactly know how much fuel I have, but fortunately we have a mission that is just a quick hop. There seems to be a fishing, fishing vessel in distress. Go investigate and rescue them if they are in danger. Four and a half clicks out, and then transport them, well, pretty much a across the pond here towards that medical facility, the hospital. Fortunately, this island does come with a decent supply of uh, fuel, 13,485. Should be enough to keep me going for quite a while. The first unlock that I will do is going to be that advanced fluids management. Because I really need to be seeing exactly how much fuel I have and what the longevity of this craft is going to be. For now, I cannot even abort my own craft, see how much fuel I have, um, slash how far the refueling process is. So I'm just going to have to look at that here. And I know that that fuel tank down there in the middle contains about 1,300 liters of fuel. Uh, apparently right now it contains a good deal more. Uh, no, sorry, it's 1,300. Yep, no, it's exact. All right. Let's take it out for a spin. Throttle up. Start the engine. Give it a bit of clutch. Get us out of the dock. Let's see what the engine RPS is. About three and a half, which is not bad. Turn the lights on. This is in cruise mode, by the way. So this is keeping fuel efficiency as good as it can possibly get. Uh, for this particular mission, I think a speedy recovery would be more ideal. Because I want to get there. I want to pick up the people. I want to bring them to the hospital and get back. And see, this is the RPS that you normally want to be looking at, about 12. And at 12 uh, RPS, 
let's say 12 to 13, I'm doing a speed of 75, 76. So having the medium engine and the fluids would definitely help. Because it's going to be capable of going quite a bit faster than that. But it's not going to be the end goal of upgrading this craft. The end goal is going to be to create a craft which is a full length ship. Capable of still doing pretty good speeds. Um, means it's going to be pretty long. Probably, but not fully wide. Because then you're displacing a massive amount of... Um, water and as such it's going to be requiring an immense amount of fuel and keep in mind that every liter of fuel costs me one buck so uh, i could pay for another seventeen thousand liters which is more than enough but it can go pretty fast seventeen thousand liters especially in one of those large craft especially if you have large engines on them and by large engines i mean uh, these big boys. The large engines that output, I think, about 200,000 power. But they are really, really thirsty engines. So you really got to make sure that you have a big fuel tank on there. And the 13,000 liter fuel tanks that I have on my bases are simply not going to be enough. I will have to go with something bigger. Now to fund all that, I'm probably going to have to build a tanker. Um, over here I can sell jet fuel. And apparently jet fuel is really in demand because you can sell it for 12.13 per liter. Whereas I can buy it at the refinery that uh, I still as of yet have not discovered. I can buy it there usually for $4 per liter. So I would make an $8.13 profit per liter of jet fuel that I ship. So let's say I would ship about 20,000 liters of that. It's going to take me a while to pump all of that out of the craft, but if I do, I'm going to be making a profit of 160,000, uh, well, dollars, I guess. Yeah, dollars. So with that, I will then be able to fund that craft. For now, though, it's off to unlocking more parts and uh, discovering more missions. Now, I've set the view distance to maximum, which means that even in dark, you can still see the islands from pretty far away. Normally, the view distance is, I think, set to 8. You can crank it all the way up to 20,000 meters. It does, of course, ask a little bit more of your graphics. But so far, I haven't seen any slowdowns in the game. Now, it's also nice that we have the power plant so close. Uh, so we have our main base. We have the uh, medical ward. We have the helicopter base. A small helicopter base, that is. And we have the fuel... Sorry, not the fuel tank. The uh, power station. So all of those should be fine. Easily accessible, easily reachable. Quite a few missions to go for that. Alright, we are approaching our uh, rescuees. Let's slow it down a little. While preferably not entirely killing the engine. I want to more or less pull alongside without killing the engine. So let's... Yeah, there we go. The engine RPS going up. What happens to you guys? Why are you out in the water? We've received an EPIRB. I'm not exactly sure what an EPIRB is. It's probably short for something. But it's the first time hearing of it. Uh, the original mission was rescue fishermen. There seemed to be a fishing vessel in distress. Uh, 404 fishing vessel not found. And apparently it has at this point sunk. Now this is not what I referenced earlier in uh, the video about ships that can sink. Because I have actually seen one sink real time. Uh, this was not that mission. This seems to be just a couple of fishermen which have lost their craft. So it's one of those simple go out there, pick it up and bring them back missions. Um, other missions I hope are going to be more interesting. So I might have to do some cherry picking on what missions uh, I actually want to capture on video. And that means that you might not get to see everything. Because sometimes you just get a whole host of these missions which are just not that interesting to show. And of course I will not be forgetting the Sawyer Islands. It's still a place that I want to revisit, but only if we get missions there. 
Because otherwise, uh, it's a beautiful landmass, but it's just a little boring. You need something, or you need to have to do something over there. If there's nothing to do, well, then why would I be there? Because I'm here to rescue people, I'm here to uh, <laughs> be a parcel service of sorts. Like, move out, pick up stuff, bring it out to other places. But also, put out fires. There will be missions where you put out fires. Uh, so far, I haven't seen them yet, but that's probably because I haven't unlocked the firefighting equipment yet. Many of these missions have a limitation. If you don't have any of the larger islands yet, you're not going to get particular missions. If you don't have firefighting yet, you're not going to get firefighting missions, usually. Uh, and if you don't have diving equipment, then usually the game spares you those missions. But sometimes it goes a bit mental and does give you one of those. Uh, even though you cannot possibly hope to survive a dive of 100 meters down. Um, for this, for example, install a sensor module to the oil well on the ocean floor. Well, I'm sorry, but I'm not anywhere near equipping diving equipment. Because that goes through rescue equipment, then diving equipment, and then deep diving equipment. So I am a total of 10 uh, plus another 10 plus 30 research points off. So that's 50 points off. Yeah, I'm not going to be doing that anytime soon. So I guess that oil rig is going to have to just wait it out for now. Now we also have a couple of oil rigs nearby. Uh, there's at least one here, and I think I saw some other one in the distance. So ideally, and well, it might not really be worth my time, but I'd be buying crude oil here. Um, then sending it to the refinery, pumping it out there. Pumping in jet fuel, and selling the jet fuel here, and then making a round trip to my base. It would require, however, a craft that can do a transportation mission of a large amount of fuel especially if I want to be carrying the crude oil which is generally just not worth it because you're carrying so little and the pumping process is so slow that it's just not going to be worth your time that's why despite maybe having a better markup I usually just skip that mission because it is simply not worth my time now time to slow it down because I think Yep, there's the dock. Right here. Suppose this is good enough. Just jump over the bow of the boat. Transport these people here. Tell them to wait for a bit. Repeat the process a couple of times. Don't follow. And then we should get a bit more cash and a couple more research points. You also get a couple of parts in stock usually, but I don't really pay attention to those most of the time. Because I don't find them to be too reliable. You never quite know what you get, um, or what you have in store, and whereas I have it researched, it is ideal. Because then you always have access to it. Alright, uh, stop following, stop following. Hold on. You guys are all inside the research circle, yes? You. Get in bed. You. There we go. 12 research points. And we got a large propeller, which uh, I usually don't use. And a little bit of cash. 6k. Not too bad. Especially the research points are nice, because now I can unlock the fluid management over here and start to build custom fluid tanks. So let's go for a research on that. That's going to take me 55 minutes, which I will skip. Um, or that is, which I'll sleep through. For now, this is where I'm going to end the episode. We have made it back to the main area. And hopefully we're going to be getting quite a bit more interesting missions over here. Other than just transporting shit from A to B. And figuring out some, uh, or finding some more player built missions. And again, if you want to build your own mission that I can do, uh, you can do that in the Stormworks editor. It's not that hard. It takes a little bit of figuring out how it works. And maybe I'm going to do a bit of a tutorial on that later. But it is fairly easy, so it should be doable. Anyway, that's all for Stormworks this week. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you next week for the next installment of the series.